Hello everyone, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming, bringing you another Diablo 3 video. Today we are bringing you a video on how to solo push in Diablo 3. So these will be some tips and tricks that will help you advance your solo rating. Uh, there comes a time for all solo players as they're pushing where you just run into that wall and not everybody knows how to go about getting past it. There is a true cap to a character and we'll go through what that is. But first I want to give you some tips and tricks that will help you advance your greater rift pushing by at least, I would say three to five levels at least because most people get stuck before their actual cap. And I think with these tips and tricks, you'll be able to go at least five levels higher, if not further. So, of course, the first thing that we've probably done already, is we pick the class that we want to go with. And then we have a particular build in mind. Or if you don't have a build in mind and it's a new class and you just want to see what's available to you. Uh, Icy Veins is actually pretty decent at providing you the list of different builds that exist for a character. So here I look at Witch Doctor. There's a plethora here. So we got the Spirit Barrage. We got the Zuni with Carnival. Um, Spirit Barrage Legacy of Dreams. So there's a few different ones. And each one has a different rating as to their pushing capabilities. And Icy Veins is good at identifying that. So here we can see whether they're low tier, mid tier, high tier, and then top tier. With the new ranking system in Diablo, of course, with the ladder system, we can see that there's different, uh, like uh, we have different things here. So we got the LOD. Mundanugus, uh, the Spirit of Rapture, Zuni, Helltooth. We have the different rankings that we can do. So we can go and build that set if we want. We can see the different potential. Um, they all have different greater rift potentials. And here we can see just here they um, on the site that they do a great job of identifying what are the top tiers and high, middle, and bottom. So when you're going with one of these builds, just keep in mind that not all builds are created equal. So some have higher pushing potential and than others, but it's nice that Diablo has implemented that ladder system where you can compete or see your ranking with a particular build against others with that build. I will say this, although the Icy Veins is good at identifying the different sets and how they rank, it's not as great with um, the actual build itself. It is very good at an introductory build with the, ability, with the skills and the runes as well as the passes that you want to use but it is not that great at actually encompassing what you will want to use when you get to the top end of what you can do of the capability of the particular builds. That comes with personal experience and, and altering your, your skill sets or comparing yourself to see how others in the leaderboard are also doing if you're having trouble. So Icy Veins is good at identifying the particular builds and their potential, but not as great at maximizing the builds themselves. So after figuring out our build and that we're geared out accordingly, we have the correct items and we got the correct passives and skills. What we also want to do is we want to make sure that our follower is equipped correctly to maximize our, our effectiveness. So really there's only a couple pieces that really truly matter on the follower, which is why mine is not fully populated. We want her or him, depending on who you select, to have the flavor of time. So this of course make pylon effects last twice as long and it emanates. So it means that if you click on a power pylon or conduit, you get that power for twice as long as you would normally get it. And additionally, we also want them to have a nemesis bracer so that when we click the pylon, that an elite will pop out or a champion and that we can use that pylon to then kill them and get the orbs and the extra progression as we want to push through the, the greater rift. Those are the two most important things that your followers should have. Um, you, I guess you should also make sure that they have their trinket, whichever would be, they, they cannot die because you always want them to be live so you can utilize uh, their items that they're wearing that benefit you. Uh, we also want them to have an Oculus Ring. So this is when you kill a, an enemy that it puts a power circle on the ground that you can stand in and you can deal up to 85% more damage. So we want them alive as long as possible so we can make use of their itemization. And they also have a few additional skills that come in handy. Uh, like they now have a second life thing where they will save you from dying. Um, so you don't have, to, so well, that you don't die. And so we can just continue on. And then with that, if we also want to use our second life, we then end up with three lives essentially, or we can get rid of our second life and run a different passive. So we want to make sure they're alive all the time and we want to make the best use of their items. 
So after we have our gear all figured out and our build and we know that it's working, there is an important thing to note. Similar that uh, not all sets and builds are created equal, all maps are not created equal. So there are certain maps that you will be, have a high probability for success and then there will be maps that will almost guarantee you failure, especially if you're pushing at the brink of your potential certain maps will help guarantee success and certain ones will inevitably dis uh, spell your failure. So the maps that you're looking for when you're pushing to your maximum potential is we want Festering Woods or we would like Battlefield. So the reason, so here we have Festering Woods on the left and we have Battlefield on the right. So the reason that these maps are so good is because as you can see, they are wide open for the most part and you can and there's many many pull potentials so on festering woods as we can see in the middle there my guy is in the middle of the map there is avenues up and to the left with some branches where we could pull mobs out of down into this big open area as well as to the right we could go up into the right and drag mobs down and out of that and i'll cover um, dragging mobs and creating density a little bit later in the video but the map is so big and it's has usually has a lot of map of density on those on these maps and so you can usually clear them if they are your first map you can get like 70 percent sometimes a little bit more off these so single maps and then battlefield here on the right is similar where it's wide open spaces there's no twists and turns i mean there's one turn up at the end but you can drag mobs forever and constantly create big dense stacks which is what you need for progression in order to push uh quickly a god map or a god run would be as if you could get one of these maps followed by the other one. That would be the best map sequence that you could ask for. And the saying is, or rather the rule of thumb is, if you get these maps back to back and you run it as smoothly as you can, but you still can't progress, then you're capped. And so then you'll need to look at either getting more Paragon or augmenting, which I will also touch later in the video. But basically, these are your push maps. So if you get these back to back and can't push, then you need to look at some other things that you need to do in order to push further. That being said, there are some maps that are just absolute killers. So you're probably familiar with these tiles. You'll be having a great run. Then you run onto these maps and you know that it's over. So these are maps like Barracks or the Butcher maps or Adria. Adria is notoriously a rift killer because they are long, they are tight, and there's many, many corners, and it is very, very hard to kite mobs and to create the stacks. So here, if we're looking at this Adria map, for example, like look at that on Godly Thing, how big it is, how many twists and turns, the ability to drag mobs through here are absolutely horrendous. Um, this is where many rifts just go to die. Um, a couple seasons ago when I was pushing 150, I would have Festering first and be at like 70, 80% with nine minutes or more left and this would be my next map and I couldn't finish it in time because the higher the rifts go, the longer you need to kill the Rift Guardian and on like 150s, like 145 pluses, you're sometimes needing three to five minutes to kill the boss. So uh, despite your own play, you could be playing it flawlessly. Sometimes the maps, whatever you win, may dictate your success. So I know that there's only, like I said, a few maps that really are vital to success when you're pushing at the edge of your capability. There is a strategy which is called fishing. So basically you farm up like a couple hundred keys. So if I go here, let's see, I have 500 keys there. So what you would do is you would farm up some greater rift keys from the regular Nephilim rifts. And then what you do is when you're pushing, you only really run the dungeon if you're the, the greater rift, if you get a festering battlefield or a spires map, maybe, but really you're looking for a first map festering or first map battlefield because that increases your chance of success exponentially because you can get like 70% progression off those maps in particular. And so it's called fishing. If you get anything but those two maps, then you just bail out, go back to the main menu and start all over again. So people do this, you need probably a couple hundred keys, you farm up a couple hundred keys because you can easily blow through hundred keys. You get Festering probably about, or Battlefield about one in 15, I would say. Um, so you do go through a number of keys and then of course something could go wrong while you're in the middle of the rift, 
uh, you could get caught with some bad elites or something could happen and you die a few times and then you just exit out and go back to fishing for those two maps. So one thing that you need to try to get good at, whether you get the maps you need or not, is actually stacking and pulling mob density. So here we have a pretty big room. Um, what we're going to do is when you get this open area, you want to branch out into the other areas and tag things and then bring them back. So they will, I try to keep within a screen of them to kind of drag them all together. And then they slowly will chase after you. And then you can create your big group. And most builds have an AOE potential or they thrive on DPSing down multiple ads at once. And so you just create your big group. Um, so you're not wasting time just picking off individual mobs at once. So here we just cleared a big room. There's still some ads that are left and some magic guys, but we're just going to go forward, try to find some more, double back, just make sure that they're following us because you always want, kind of want to be moving forward, looking for the increased um, or rather more dense potential to help blow things up. So here, one of these guys is actually a juggernaut, which is not overly helpful. So we're just going to have to, they are in, Harder to kill because uh, they, of course, are immune to like our gems and like Bane of the Trap, for example. They're not slowable. We can't stun them. And so any damage increases that we have from slowed or stunned mobs doesn't apply to them. And so they live forever. So for them, you need open spaces. If you can, I would avoid them. But if you can actually drag them like we're doing here, it's pretty useful. Um, and so you just keep looking for more and more density and keep going back and just uh, re aggroing to make sure they're following. So here he's come downstairs and I've actually also got another blue set here. And this is actually going to be handy because we have another pylon. So with pylons also, you want to make sure you have density and you want to go farm a couple of elites and bring them back to it before popping the pylon so you get the most out of it. So here we got the benefit of kiting along the jug as well as uh, we got a power pylon and we just nuked and blew up all three sets here. Now I know this is only on a 110, but the principle is the same for whether this is a 110 or a 140. You want to make use of your pylons. Um, I'm just on a 110 here just for the simplicity's sake of recording the video. Um, but that's what you want to do. You want to get big pulls. You want to pull them all together if you can. And if you have elites or like a juggernaut, you want to keep dragging them with you, finding stacks of mobs to help de damage them down because we'll be running AOE damage in our solos and we want need them for progression. So here we had a big pull here. We brought them all into the center and then we just blow everything up. Um, and that's all you want to do. You want to create your big stacks. If something won't die and you're out of um, trash to kill the, the elites with or the champs, then just keep moving forward. And when you find a pylon, you want to bring things back to it. You want to create like here we have a conduit. So we're just going to Go ahead a little bit, see what is around. We don't want to run too far because we want to be able to pop it if nothing is nearby. So we go and we found that there's not really much there. So we're going to bring everything back here and then we're just going to pop it. And there's going to be the elite that's going to jump out because of course we have Nemesis on our follower. And then we're just going to nuke this down. And what did we even win here? That's not a jug, so that's good. And then we're just going to keep going on our way. So like I said, the same principles here exist, whether you are in a 100, a 110, or a 140. So here we're just gonna run forward, see what else is around. Oh, there's a big guy here. We're gonna to to try to drag him down to this, but we have conduit going, so it'll probably just kill this. But that's what you wanna do. You wanna create your big stacks. If you can't kill them and the stack is all gone, then you wanna drag it with you. And if you find a pylon, then you wanna create the big stack around it to maximize its usefulness. So I know we covered a lot in that quick little blip that I just showed you. So again, just to recap, we want to drag mobs together where possible, particularly if we have big open areas, dip into the uh, hallways or like the outer branches, if you will, drag them back in the middle, blow them all up and then move on. Drag elites if you can't kill them during that initial burst as best you can. If there are no mobs around, then you'll be forced to just kill them by themselves. But really we want to drag them and keep killing trash while killing the elites. Jugs in particular, if you can drag them forever across the map, then do so, but otherwise just leave them behind. And when you find a pylon, stack group, groups around it, and then pop the pylon, blow up, hopefully also bring in some other magic guys or elites, and blow them all up, all together, maximize your time, maximize the density, and keep moving forward.
on the subject of pylons. So we are really after two pylons when we're going through the rift. These, as well as the maps that you get, can make or break the runs. So there's a bit of RNG to pushing greater rifts. So we need good maps and we need good pylons. So the power pylon and the conduit pylon are godsends. They can save a run. And if you don't get them, they can wreck the run. So when you see these pylons, you want to branch out and drag back as many elites as possible on top of these. Uh, a conduit in particular, if you can drag back, especially now that uh, the follower emanates with the flavor of time, if you can drag back like four or five elites onto this pylon, you will decimate them all and your progression will just fly up and it'll save you so much time and give you that much more time that if you get a bad map, you could still spawn the Guardian and still kill it in time. So what you are really aiming for is you want either Battlefield or you want Festering, and then you hope that you get one of these two pylons, the Conduit in particular, and then you just go out, spread out, pull back the Elites if you can, blow them all up, enjoy the quick percentage, and move on and press forward. So as mentioned, there is one elite that you really want to avoid if you can or drag it if possible, and that's the Juggernaut Affix. So of course the Juggernaut lives forever, or so it seems, because they can't be slowed in or stunned or anything like that that I mentioned earlier would increase your damage against them. They're tough to kill, especially in the upper levels. Generally speaking, they are avoided unless it's an open map and you can drag it. Basically, if you're able to kill a Juggernaut, you just count your blessings and um, and be thankful. Generally speaking, though, they are avoided and you just kind of move on. Additionally, other than the Juggernaut, you may want to avoid shielding guys potentially because they can be quite problematic at the upper levels, especially because you have to kill all of their champions in order to ensure that their shield doesn't pop up. Of course, there will be times where they don't have a shield, but... Basically, as long as they have one follower alive, they have a chance of putting on their shield. Additionally, there are the rock guys who you destroy their armor, and then they go and bury underneath the ground, and they are annoying and a pain in the ass, and I just generally skip them if I ever see them. Archers can also be problematic because they like to run around, and basically anything that is skittish and runs away from you and doesn't group up, avoid it. They are a waste of time. Unless you have a uh, pylon that has a power like attack power or conduit, then deal with them. Otherwise, I just skip them, especially if I'm pressed for time because they are generally a waste of time. So the last thing I wanted to cover here is augments and paragon. So when you first start your journey, none of your gear is going to have any augments on it. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, an augment is the 10th page here in the cube. So it's a Caladian's Caladian's Despair. So basically you take a legendary gem that you have of at least either 30 plus for a weapon, 40 plus for jewelry, 50 plus for armor, and then you can melt it into your ancient or better piece of gear and it will give you five main stat of, of depending on the gem you level per level of the gems. So here I've melted in a 107 gem, so I got 535 intellect. So the main stat that's being added is based on the color of the gem. So purple is vitality, green is dexterity, red is strength, and orange slash yellow here is intellect. And you melt it into your gear and it'll add that much um, main stat. So you have 13 pieces of gear. So for example, if you were to melt a level 100 into all of them, you get a 6,500 increased main stat. But basically what it is, is for every time you augment a piece of gear and add, let's just say, you're melting 100s in, it will increase your, your damage on your character sheet by, I would say, around 80,000. So then, of course, you know, you can do that 13 times. So that could add over a million character sheet damage to your character, which will help you progress. In my opinion, uh, whenever you augment a piece, so the very first time you augment, you will obviously be able to push higher. I found that when I reached my cap, as soon as I started augmenting, I was gaining about at least two greater rift levels per five augments. So really, let's just say for simplicity, for every 1000 main stat that you add, so whether it's through augments or when you're Paragon farming, so for every 1000 main stat, you are moving up two greater rift levels, sometimes three. So let's say you augment all your gear, 
So now you're done with that. So we have all 13 pieces augmented. We've added the 6,500 main stat. Uh, we pushed, that gave us another six levels, but now we're capped again and we can't get any further. Now you're going to have to do the Paragon grind. So of course, Paragon, uh, once you reach over 800, each additional point of Paragon you gain, you can either put into Vitality or into your main stat and at five points per level. So then I would say every 200 levels of Paragon, I was gaining another level or two of my Greater Rift. So once I'm capped on both, I've got my dream situation where I got a Festering Woods or a Battlefield opening. Uh, I got to the end of the, that level, I was at 70%. And regardless, and let's say I got another Battlefield afterwards and I wasn't able to time that in time and I'm all the way augmented, 13 of 13, I'm now into my Paragon farm. So basically I'm just going to go and I'm going to do speed runs. So speed runs are greater rifts that you can complete in two to three minutes. And you do that as a group or you can do it solo. And I would just farm up another 100 or 200 Paragon points. And then I would try it again. Or let's say the other strategy you could do is I have 107s in my gear. I could farm, let's say if I was pushing like 140s, I could farm 120 gem levels and then I could melt all 120s back into this gear and pick up that incremental gem levels. So that would have been a 13. So I would have picked up like another 150 gem levels, which is around like an, uh, another 600 or so main stat, which could have then also yielded me another greater rift level. So then we're just min-maxing. So once we're capped out, we just got to start figuring out how to get more main stat. And the only two ways to get more main stat is through Paragon or increasing our augments. So then it just becomes the time of investment of farming more Paragon and more Paragon and more Paragon. Most of the people who are doing like 150 greater rift levels, which is of course is the max, they are 4,000 Paragon or higher, which is quite an investment. Most players get to around 2,000 at the, by the end of the season. Um, so basically with the 2000 Paragon expectation set, you probably won't be able to do a 150, but you might be able to do 140s. If you want to climb higher, you'll probably have to invest the time to get your Paragon up to 3000 and then 4000 if you want to be able to do it easier. It is possible to do it with the less Paragon, but of course the less Paragon you have, the less damage you deal, the more the trash and elites survive and the more damage you take and then the decreases your chance of survivability. So that's the end of our tips and tricks that we have to help you with your solo pushing. We hope that you find this information useful. We use these uh, tips and tricks ourselves and we have cleared 150 solos in seasons prior. It does help just push your character to the brink. And I personally find it the most fun just getting to that level where I reach that cap, where I get the dream map and the five man condi and all the rest of that stuff. And if I find out I can't push past that because I'm not much of a Paragon farmer, I will tap out, um, but these tips and trips do help you maximize your character. It is fun finding out how much you can really do. We've hoped you found this information incredibly helpful. As always, we appreciate any likes and subscribes. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know below. We love answering those. And as always, have a good one and happy pushing everyone.